In a recent episode, we developed a small binary file encryption tool that can take any file as an input, for example, an image, a video, a text file, and encrypt it using a password. However, the hashing algorithm is very insecure, and I would like to demonstrate to you today how we can crack this hashing algorithm or, well, in other words, how easy it is to, to crack it. Um, because hashing algorithms are vulnerable when it's easy to create a hash collision. So let's have a look at the encryption tool. I have a directory that contains two files, the encryption tool secret, uh, the encryption tool source code, which is this one right here. Let's have a quick look at the tool again. So we have a main method um, and the main method reads an input file character by character and then writes an output file using encrypted characters back to the standard output stream. The files are encrypted using a simple hashing algorithm. The first input argument is passed as a key here. So the input is a key. And then from that key, the individual characters are summed up and returned as a hash. And then in the encrypt method, a bit mask is derived from that, from that hash, from that key. And the weakness here is really the incredibly weak hashing method because it's just summing the individual input integers. For example, if we now compile the, the file like this, okay, that works. So we have now an encryption tool and we can call it as follows. We call the encryption tool uh, with an input, let's call it uh, yeah, let's do it uh, very simple. Let's let's do a very, very simple key. But let's say the, the key is AA. Then we can feed in the secret and output an encoded secret. The secret file is, by the way, just a text file containing the string our little secret. And now the encoded secret is in a binary file, it looks like this. So it's unreadable because it's encoded. Now, technically, what happens is that the encryption tool consumes or takes this argument AA as a key. Let's have a look again. So argument V1 is the key AA. The hashing function then hashes that key. Let's try again with something with uh, the key BB. Oh, okay, I will compile again. Let's try with BB. And now BB will encode my file. Yeah. We even got a few <laughs> Chinese characters here. And now the interesting thing, my assumption is that because we just sum up the individual characters, we can break the key or the hashing algorithm by supplying a key that will result in the same sum. So if we pass A and C here, this should be the same sum as BB. Let's try the following. I will encode a file using bb. That is the encoded secret. Okay, now I will decode a file using that same using that same algorithm. Let's write that file into decoded secret and have a look at that. As you can see, the file was decoded successfully. Now, if I supply the characters A and C as a key, I suspect it will still decode successfully because the sum of BB should be the same as the sum of AC. A is one less than B and C is one more than B, so the sum should be the same. It's like 5, 5 and this is 4 and 6. 
5 plus 5 is the same as 4 plus 6. Both equals 10. So let's see if we can decode the secret this way. And let's have a look at the decoder secret. Secret, And that is it. We basically produced a hash collision. Collision. This password creates the exact same hash as the, as the initial password. And that's why, well, we get a hash collision collision. And this is one reason why this hashing algorithm is very insecure. Technically, even if you enter a very, very long password, well, it could be cracked if you know the hash. It could be cracked incredibly easily, actually. For example, think of a website, a web database that stores login data, an email and a password hash. And you know that the hashing algorithm is a simple sum. And if the password hash is, for example, 11,300, well, then you can basically provide any password that will sum up to that value. So, and that's the key learning from this video. Um, a hash is insecure if you can easily derive an input that creates that hash from, well, from your input data. Other hashing algorithms, for example, well, even MD5 had the, has this problem. MD5 is in a way insecure because you can determine, you can fix certain characters. And I, as far as I know, there are even tools that can derive the entire input or an entire input that matches that hash given a specific MD5 hash. And there are other algorithms which are well safer because they are not as, as deterministically well derivable. And that's why summing is an incredibly poor cho choice for hashing. In this case, it's not as bad as, it, as you might think in the, in the first place. First, because the longer your password is, the bigger your hash is and the more secure it is. Okay. And in our case, we don't store the hash along with the encoded secret. So an attacker would have the encoded file, but he would not know the hash that we used to uh, that we used to encode this secret with. However, if this was a web application and we stored the hash inside, an, inside a database and you saw that all the hashes are, and either you, you knew that all the hashes are generated through, through a simple sum algorithm, as in this case, or all the hashes are in a sim, similar range. For example, all the hashes are have values between 1000 and 10000 then you somehow then you practically just know that the size of the hash is correlated with the user input and that's the problem like this you you know it tightly correlates um, and a good hash should provide a very random looking result regardless of whether you input just a single character value for example a or a super long password, for example, my dog likes to eat carrots, something like that. Yeah, because in this case, if you get a super random hash value, regardless of your input, or a random looking hash value, then you don't know, you can't really know the hashing algorithm that was that was producing that. And also, well, It is incredibly hard to to reproduce an input that creates that hash. And I hope you found this episode interesting. Well, we developed our own small encryption tool, but then I showed you a vulnerability of it, a shortcoming of it, and I really think it's worth talking about these things as well. So see you next time. Bye.